You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Supported by Eddie Bauer. It's probably 11 o'clock somewhere. Yeah. So what's this? We got the Magic Hat Brewing Company, the single chair gold. Out of Burlington, Hill. Vermont. Yeah, that's in honor of the Mad River Glen single chair. Well. It's quality brew, quality amber ale. And the Ski to East bottle opener. <laughs> Working wonders. I'm Recently I might, I, might have to, I might have to take this with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, gentlemen, thanks for having me at Ski the East. Yeah, thanks for coming. I Appreciate just, it. I decided that um, I wanted to kind of find out what you guys did. I'm a West Coast guy, always have been. <clears throat> I've never been out east. Um, first trip? For Well, I've been to like Montreal, but I've never been down eastern states. Mm-hmm. I definitely never skied down here yet. Um, but being that we were just in Montreal, I figured why not uh, kind of go out of my way and see some things. I'd never been to New York, so I'm going to go check that out for a few days. And then I was chatting with Cam over here and he's like, oh, I saw his hat, the Ski the East hat. I'm like, oh, do you guys, you work for Ski the East? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I emailed him the other day. He's like, oh yeah, you should come and talk. Like that's kind of what I was hoping for. So you had heard of us. Yeah. So just kind of, so we do have, we do, we have heard of you out there. Some people haven't, which is fine. Which is fine. And then more people maybe will find out about you now. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. So why don't you introduce yourselves? Yeah. I'm Chris James. Also known as Rooster, and been working with Jeff here, my partner, co-founder of Ski the East for, man, seven, 16 years. Way too long. The bromance <laughs> has been going on for a long time. <laughs> and your full name, my friend? Uh, Jeff McDonald. Jeff Mack. Do you, yep. do you have a, a fun nickname as well? Uh, like at the- one point it was Dex from uh, Aspen Extreme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now on our phone answer machine, it's Big Ohio. Big Ohio, is that where you're from? Yeah, Ohio. From Ohio, yeah. So where did you guys how did you guys end up here? Are you you you're not a native East Coaster, are you? I mean we consider anything east of the Mississippi East Coast. Oh, in really? our in our book. But yeah, <laughs> true true eastern seaboard. Yeah, I grew up in, in Maine, mid coast Maine, and went to college at UVM. That's where I met Jeff. And uh yeah, that was two two thousand. So how'd you guys meet? How'd you come together? Just a ski club or something like that, or you're riding a chairlift or something, or how did that work? No, out? my roommate freshman year lived on Jeff's Hall, sophomore year, and just being ski bums and shredding with some similar circles of friends, we we linked up. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> tell me, kind of, what is the overall? What's the scope of Ski the East? What do you consider yourselves? Like as of right now, what is Ski the East? We're uh, an apparel and accessories brand for East Coast skiers, and we consider ourselves the voice of Eastern skiing. Right on. Also producing, yeah, media and events. Yeah, so that's where you kind of get your start from, right? Like I said, mm-hmm. I, I've known, I've always known of the name. You guys have marketed yourself well. Um, being that it's Ski the East, obviously you have a, a ni- not a niche, semi-niche market. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah. Everything east of the Mississippi, apparently. Um, but we know what you, what it is. I haven't really, I've never, I had never really dove in deep yeah. to kind of figure out, but <clears throat> you see all the signs on the wall, the pictures on the wall here used to be meathead films. Is that how it got started? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so. so give me the, let's hear the origin story, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> so Rooster and I met in college, was it sophomore year? Yep. Sophomore year. And I was uh, involved with the campus TV station at that point, um, doing some dorky TV stuff, helping get the videos set up every day. and But I got access to a lot a- of the AV editing. Club AV, yeah, AV Club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I got access to a lot of the cool computers and got to showcase anything I made on Canvas Wide, which was pretty cool. And which so, is like the, t- the TV station. Yeah, yeah, it was like closed circuit, uh, college TV, yeah. Yeah, they don't even have any TV anymore, no. I think, at UVM. No. But um, so I started a TV show called Ed's Corner with another buddy of mine. Was it was that Ed? Variety yeah, ben, show. Obviously. Yeah. And uh, we did, yeah, just basically a jackass variety show where we do everything from uh, the milk challenge, trying to drink a gallon of milk from the top of the stairs in the dorm, and, and they're puking down over the steps. And we did 
we attached fire extinguishers to the backs of office chairs and rolled down hills. Fight clubs in the yep. basement bike room of the dorms. You know, put on all lacrosse equipment and had a big fight club. <laughs> and he had like a pet ferret, which was totally illegal at UVM, and we would do all kinds of stuff. With that. <laughs> I heard those things stink. Yeah, yeah they, they do. do. They? I grew up with one. You had a ferret too. Yeah, <laughs> weird. His name was Willie. Willie the ferret. <laughs> How long do those things last for? I don't know. He got cancer, and and we had to put him down. First time I saw my dad cry, actually. <laughs> first like, time, really? A ferret? First on, time man. I saw my father cry was <laughs> when our ferret died. <laughs> so random. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Learned something new. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we were doing this TV show, and I got uh, Rooster involved. He was the music man, right, to begin with? I don't know. Yeah, I was just kind of kicking around your, your dorm room. Or your dorm hall. Just a bumming bunch. around, sleeping yeah. in the hall. Yeah, just totally just being a drifter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> linked up with uh, some of his buddies and, yeah, just started doing some little skits and planning some skits with Jeff. And I was just super interested in everything he was doing. And, um, yeah, and then that that rolled into the winter season where he was out filming with his buds and – uh, shooting another ski movie. You'd done a you'd done a ski movie. The your freshman year was actually a VHS release. What year was that? Yeah, I was two thousand. See, I started in two thousand, so the first VHS came out in two thousand two. Two thousand two. So yeah, you're like, that was right. called a natural force. Unnatural force. Yep. And where was that based out of? And so that was filmed all on the East Coast. Um, the word the word Meathead Films came about from that TV show, and the reason we started filming skiing for. Well, a big part. I was planning on doing the TV show all through the winter, but then we got uh, 27 school citations and almost got kicked out <laughs> for all the stuff that we were doing. It was not Illegal. allowed on campus. <laughs> so it wasn't it was actually like, written out in the rules that you weren't allowed to do it, but we were... You just got tickets for Cousin, yeah. cousin and Ruckus? Yeah. So we had to meet with the school board, and we got all of them waived, but they said we had to cancel <laughs> the show. So <laughs> We have an unreleased fourth episode that never came out. Oh yeah, shit. Yeah. That should get be, that out there. You yeah. should get, you should add some kind of skiing to it and yeah. do it like a anniversary <laughs> an anniversary special release. Yeah. yeah. Straight to the straight to the mailing list. It's yeah. going to come out on VHS, yeah. Yeah. Do you, so, you should if you can do that, <laughs> release an unreleased special edition VHS, people would buy it. That yeah, would be sick. If you can get a VHS tape, you know how they have vinyl. Yeah, it yeah. has like colored vinyl if you can get like yeah. a like a a wrapped VHS for people to, to yeah, get. Yeah, they make the phone package VHS. and the big. You know. I'm talking about the actual cassette. Instead of having it <laughs> yes. black, have like a ski blue, East lo- blue Red, ski oh, East yeah. logo on it. That would be sick. Would be I think we I think we missed our time window for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen, <laughs> right? Anything can happen. So Meathead Films came out of the out of the the college show. Yeah, college show, and then once we were kicked off there, right around when winter was starting, that was sophomore year. Um, we I just started filming a lot on the mountain with a bunch of skiers and went to some competitions locally and met some guys out of Quebec, uh, Jason Jacadas and Simon Thompson, who you know, yeah. lives out at Whistler now. Yeah. And um, so linked up with some comp skiers and some really good um, backcountry skier uh, guys that we went to school with. And where, did, where are you going to school here? Like, um, Yeah, mm-hmm. U- University of Vermont here in Burlington. In Burlington? Yeah. This is a cool town, man. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I've been here for like half a day, and I'm already like, wow, this place is great. It's good vibes. Yeah, yeah, really, really good vibe. Like, it's a tiny little town, a college town, which means there's a lot of girls here, mm-hmm. right? You got that really cool little downtown walking mall area thing. Yep. It's a lot of neat stores. We yeah, got a lot of really... our friends never left, yeah. We have yeah. a lot of buddies that stayed around, and it's, it's nice, yeah. This, yeah, and, and what are the distances to all the hills? There's a, this is kind of the hub, yeah, right? hub yeah. of the wheel sort of thing, right? Yeah, you can go like an hour in any direction, and you're at some of the top resorts in the East Coast for sure. Counting and going west across Lake Champlain over into upstate New York, where Cam, our production video production manager, is from, and yeah, there's White Face is, is right across the lake there, and that's a it's a big old girl. <laughs> Big old tall girl. <laughs> Biggest vert in the East. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Jay Peak, Stowe, um, or up to the north to the the east is, you know, Sugarbush, Mad River Glen. To the south is Killington and Mount Snow. And, um, yeah, to the west you got the Adirondacks. So tons of resort and backcountry potential. Um, 
you know, the White Mountains aren't too far from here, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and that's a whole whole other world of possibilities. And then the Chick Chocks, you know, the up in back, Quebec, yep. yeah, backcountry Holy Grail up in QC is, uh, that's a solid, I don't know, 13, 12 hours. <laughs> Depends on 12 the hour drive bag. yeah it depends on the weather yeah, that's like a once a year trip kind of thing yeah how many how many bathroom breaks you gotta take but um yeah so good, when you when, when you're deciding um like where are we riding today where are we skiing um like i was just in new zealand last month and they get all these crazy different weather patterns and there's all these different zones and they're always like mm-hmm. okay storm's coming in this way so this place is going to get it hit best do you decide where you're going to go skiing the day just based on where the storm came in, where the snow was doing, mm-hmm. is there like a specific website that you can see and compare them all? Or do you guys just kind of have an idea? You've been doing we kind of so know long? from experience, yeah. yeah, where the most snow is going to fall just having filmed and skied a lot of the big storms over the last decade or so. So we'll we'll check a bunch of the websites. Um, I mean, I check simple as weather.com, but Rooster goes on NOAA. And we, we'll check a bunch of websites. Yeah, you got to do the mountain point forecast, dude. Yeah. What do you that mean? Is we're, helpful. We're, we're coming up on two decades, man. This is year yeah, 17. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, when we first started out, just having all these options, you know, right in our backyard was a huge part of it. And that's that's why both Jeff and I came to college here is for, for the skiing. So I think, yeah, our senior year, I, I barely squeaked by. Just we were out <laughs> filming all the time. And, um, I think it was in 2003, or I guess, yeah, 2002, our, our, the first kind of real movie we had, we sold sponsorship and, you know, had obligations to that and had to produce a movie tour um, during the fall. So we were in that whole Had, an, you, had, an, had you ever cycle. done anything like that before? Do you remember no. those, those early days? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Vaguely. Because it, it, <laughs> <laughs> It was is probably one of those fun and exciting and it's crazy work and we're super stressed but it doesn't matter because yeah well we were in college when we first started premiering him so it wasn't even oh really so you did it while you were going to school yeah we yeah. would show oh, the wow. premiere of the film um, and we we got free advertising on the campus TV station so that was great so we got a lot of people out to those first premieres and kind of got the name out there and then once um, I was graduating in two thousand four that's when we kind of made the leap to try to get a few sponsors on board and luckily a few came on and mm-hmm. we just it was you know pretty thin for a couple of years but we made a go of it and our, our niche has just always been filming all east coast skiing so um that's what we've done you know with meathead films all the way till 2013 and a lot of people at the time were filming just park back mm-hmm. in the uh, mid-2000s right so. when it right when it was first really taken off yeah, yeah. Park east coast was really known for that you know they had a lot of big competitions vermont open and um, even the X Games was here in Mount Snow in early 2000s, so <laughs> pretty sick. But, First and last time, yeah. But people basically knew it for a park, I guess, as far as the broader ski industry. Um, and one of the things that we did that was different was start to film some backcountry, which almost nobody was taking pictures of or, mm-hmm. or filming. Not out here. Not many. No. Yeah. yeah. And we met a guy uh, at Stowe, Mark Corville, who sort of introduced us to a lot of the backcountry zones on Mount Mansfield, which is the tallest mountain in Vermont. And he was like an old salt with, he lived in, literally lived in a van down by the river. Yeah. <laughs> he had an extension cord running from his van generator into the ski shop that he worked at in Stowe. And Hashtag van life. Yeah. yeah. Before it became trendy. Yeah. yeah. He was definitely before that. And so I would meet up with him on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I had some time off school. And he would take me out. I would film just him because he would want to show me all the good spots. Um, so I got to learn a lot of the secret zones. And then afterwards, I'd take him grocery shopping because he needed to. He didn't have a car. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'd take him around. We go get you all do, the supplies. You go, you, go, you go ride, and then you take him on errands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he was yeah in his fifties at that point. Is he yeah. still around? He went out to Chamonix for a while and hurt his back and i think he came back but i haven't i haven't heard anything yeah nobody about. knows he was always pretty a, like mystical guy so yeah it was uh a treat meeting up with him and and uh touring around with him so yeah we haven't I haven't heard from him in he, a while. he got the nickname the alien for out in chamonix i know that because i guess people just thought he was from a different planet <laughs> <laughs> he's a far out dude yeah, <laughs> yeah he's pretty far out. do you get a lot of characters out out east a lot of just strange, strange fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a big, Within big this, part of it. I know it, the skiing sure. culture has a lot of them anyways. It yes. Just, which then seems to breed them. Yes. But do you find they're kind of, is there like a, like a, like a, a typecast 
weirdo, ski weirdo. <laughs> I don't know. Out, yeah. out east here, it takes all it takes all kinds, but yeah, for sure, that's something that we've uh, been super drawn to with staying out, just filming out here, staying out here, just all the all the characters and just crazy community that's out here because it's so die hard and everybody just doesn't give a shit. And, no, you know, people will be out there. Skiing, no matter what the it's like, screw, doing. screw the West. I'm staying here out of spite because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's good, or I can't afford a plane ticket. Well, a lot of people go out west, you know, they'll graduate college, they go out west, and they'll do ski bombing or some come pro skiers, the guys we film with. But a lot of them end up coming back after five, ten years to move closer to family once they have kids or whatever it is. So, a lot of people end up coming back east and um, ski out there years on the east coast here. And that, that's one of the things that. You know, whether it was Mia Films or Ski East more recently, is we've always just tried to bring together that community aspect. It's it's way tighter knit. It's also smaller geographically. Mm-hmm. Like we go out west and you guys do huge drives. One resort to the other is nine, ten hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. whereas here it's like, oh, 45 minutes, that's kind of a long drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, we don't want to go there. It's what, an hour and a half? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's different, just different mindset. And we're close to a lot of big cities too, so everything's close Montreal, New York, Boston huge population you know and mm-hmm. a lot of people do the weekend warrior do you, scene do you so what are the what are the crowds like in places like this being that you're so close to these big me- metropolitan areas is it like saturday you just don't go skiing on a saturday or a sunday kind of thing sometimes yeah yeah it depends time of the year and everything holiday season it's usually when we try to get out and explore and in, in the back country mm-hmm. early season stuff but um yeah it can get crowded but nothing that's unbearable you know yeah <clears throat> with um so with the movies the so we're at what 2004 now you just graduated yeah um so you're like in your for you know, did a couple demo kind of demo movies through college that sort mm-hmm. of thing and you're like all right <clears throat> we're gonna do this mm-hmm. um so you'd ended up doing how many like one a year for what another 10 years or so yeah, basically yeah. one a year all the way to 2013. So our, our last one was in 2012. So we did, I think, 11 total movies because one year we did two. Yeah. Um, why did you uh, Why did you pull the plug? Well, yeah, sponsorship was kind of plateauing and um, DVD sales were declining and the digital distribution, digital sales, iTunes weren't uh, making up for it. And, you know, we had been at it doing... 40, 50 public movie premieres every fall um, leading up to the winter and just kind of seeing room for, for a transition and just seeing way more scalability with diving into to merchandise. So, mm-hmm. you so, know. <clears throat> so you, where did the Ski of the East come from? Like, the, obviously, your Meathead films. When did the Ski of the East name phrase how did that yeah. how did that come out? The Ski of the East name came up as an idea to sell more Meathead films sweatshirts basically <laughs> swag we, we couldn't sell enough me to have films t-shirts and sweatshirts so we decided to put ski the east on the front of a few of them and um and it was a phrase that we've been knocking around at the bars that year i think we wrote it on the wall a few times yeah kind of just as a unifying theme for our meathead crew you walk by and you're like yeah yeah <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah, this one dirty, grimy bar that we love downtown Burlington called Esox has, you know, <laughs> chalk chalkboard walls and we just always scribbling shit up there and um yeah, that was one phrase we threw threw up there and just <clears throat> we're out with the boys and Cam's familiar with this establishment very well and he wasn't around back then, but he's carrying on the legacy and yeah, we we <laughs> threw threw that name up there and just we're always talking about it and how we wanted to grow on that so so you just one day were like we should put this on t-shirt yeah, yeah. it was in the fall we were getting ready to go out on our movie tour one of the first ones and we wanted to make some of the media films merch and um just decided to put something more universal on the front so ski the east and um we were living as a huge group at the time i was living with my girlfriend now my wife and she was she suggested putting on a sticker like uh, some of the local shops do so we decided to make just a super basic bumper sticker and threw it up and I thought like you were talking about doing doing one like the like the got milk sticker. Or yeah, whatever. I guess maybe that was. was like, we wanted it really that. basic yeah. and simple. Yeah, It'd be like got east. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, the the font is very simple. Just but super it, self explanatory. Like the stuff like that is statement. The, yeah, stuff like statement. that is the is the most powerful because it is so simple. Yeah, right? yeah. It's the message, right? Like yeah, 
this like I got one on here. You'll get it. Like right there, that's yeah. so easy. You're like, blunt. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Blunt. <laughs> there's no there's no ambiguity. It's like no, oh, you don't get it. TVs, it. So can you be a little bit more yeah. specific about that? I don't really uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We had to be careful actually yeah. the way we translated it when we recently made a um, shirt for the Quebec crowd. And there's all different ways you can say ski this is like a command or an order or a suggestion and so we had to work with the person to figure out what, what exactly it, what it meant. What yeah. did it work out? To, to us, it means, we know what it means, but the way it can be translated is a little different. Ski the East? It can be an action or, a, yeah, a demand. Yeah. And what, yeah, what did it come out as? Ski is le Est? <laughs> Question yeah. mark? Ski le yeah. <laughs> Question mark, yeah, that would add something. Friggin' romance languages, man. Too complex. That, see, that could be a good out. one, too. Ski the East with a question mark. Maybe people, <laughs> make people yeah. start yeah. add, a, add a little philosophy into it. And make yeah. them start questioning them, themselves. Ski the East. Totally. Yeah. Maybe I should. Yeah. Do I? Do I want to? Is that what should be done? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So, how, so you got uh, you put on a shirt. Yeah, put on some T-shirts, put on some stickers. And then you brought them to, like, the premieres and, and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Were you so tossing we're doing... them out to the crowd, or were you like, oh, I'll sell these? Or a little bit. A little bit of both, yeah. Everyone's like, where can I get one of those? Where can I get one All of those? All the free stickers. Yeah. That was, like, our initial guerrilla marketing tactic there. Mm -hmm. um, and just made a few thousand, I think, the first year. Mm -hmm. um, now we make probably 100,000 a year or more. So. Yeah. It's a lot of stickers. There's a That's lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. Where, a do, lot you get, where do you get them made? Just up in Stowe. Yeah. yeah, like a printing press? Yep, just a local shop there's doing it. And then we do our die cut stickers right in Burlington with another shop. So, yeah, it's good. So we did that for, for a long time through all our media you know, film days. We just made some basic hoodies and T-shirts, a few hats, and handed out stickers. And mm -hmm. you know, our focus was the media films, DVDs, and the tour, and the sponsors. Because that was your baby, right? That's that what was the baby. Yeah. This yeah. is what we got started. Yeah, yeah that's, like, that was 2005, yeah, yeah. When, when Ski These was part of the whole mix. So, so. You, uh, so probably, I'm assuming it probably goes a couple of years where, you know, the Ski These thing's pretty good. We're getting some more shirts out. It's like, oh, the movies are doing great. We're still having a great time with them. Yeah. And we've managed to create this, you know, auxiliary business yeah. Yeah. that's you know helping out it's not really an auxiliary business it's just part of the scheme well, we yeah. started a separate website for it so that kind of made how it long when did you start that when did you realize you know what we should actually separate this and focus 2006 it was right away yeah oh okay so yeah. we started the separate website yeah because yeah. because the demand was that big for them or you're just or yeah, more exactly. or it was it was more of a hey maybe we can do this something like this rather than have it slap you in the face and be like oh we have to do something with this because it's taken off yeah it was like send in a, a check or a mail in check or cash <laughs> yeah. and we'll mail you out a t shirt or a cap yeah. you and know, that's it was super basic yeah that's perfect right yeah. like yeah. I was talking to Jay Leventhal and it's his thing he's like stickers have always been my thing you yeah. want me you want some stickers send me an yeah. email I will send you some stickers <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Because then you just slap them around everywhere. Yeah. I mean, we were lucky enough doing the tour. We were rocking, you know, 40, 50 stops every fall at college, a lot of colleges, working with outing clubs and ski and snowboard clubs, getting paid a licensing fee to show up and do raffles and show the movie on the big screen. Um, you know, we do just all the normal ski movie locations, ski resorts, once those started firing up, bars, you know, we go into manhattan and boston and um try to get everywhere we could i think we went as far south as jersey never made it to pennsylvania but you know concentrate a lot up here in the northeast and yeah just just fistfuls of stickers uh, college kids love day. stickers so yeah. did you ever get uh, university citations for having ski these stickers put everywhere <laughs> after after i uh, never got that just think mountains did, of parking tickets on the tour That's yeah yeah come on with mountains yeah. of parking tickets. yeah yeah those Probably the worst thing that happened I illegally. Yeah, so we were Cam and yeah, I were talking about support. this the other day. Did you ever get hassled about, hey, your stickers are all over the place? You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, a few times, nothing too crazy, but we don't put them there. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just whatever people want to do. Man. Put them on, people put them on their laptops now. I don't, I don't see as much just sticking them all over the place. Really, we just see them on some stop signs. Actually, there's one on a stop sign in my neighborhood that I did not put there, but I'm sure I'm going to get blamed for it. <laughs> but every time you go past that, sign, yeah, I'm like, I'm yeah. definitely getting blamed. It's like for that. Your, your wife's like, "Why are you going this way? Don't worry about yeah. it. It's yeah. like a minute out of our way. Don't Free worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just so you can stop and look up and go, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you like come across any ski this stuff, east stuff, like anywhere else that you've been that you just totally didn't expect to be like, oh wow. Check that out. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of transplants out west, so you know they like to rep the roots and. We've traveled out there and seen, you know, seen at the top of Highlands Bowl and Aspen and, and uh, 
yeah, some other spots in Utah and yeah. so obviously you have you have it the uh, the, the trademark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any others? Have you ever like toyed with trying to find an alternative secondary one? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you're doing well with ski these. Have you been like, you know, yeah. maybe we should do a second one, kind of diversify our our things. Do you have like Ski the West trademark? <laughs> no. He's going to expand. There was, a ski no. the Mid- there was a Ski the Midwest too. Yeah, there was. Point. Who used the same font as that? Was it like a cross country silhouetted guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Skiing. Yeah. laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of kind of uh, emulation. Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of that with just other kind of niche East Coast people mm-hmm. trying to do the similar thing. Well, because that's, that's good because you, you've done something well. They're like, oh, I want to piggyback up yeah so yeah do something myself but. yeah it's a little bit of brand confusion but you know we haven't we haven't done anything legally with it i mean that's not why we got into this business mm-hmm. you know? so kind of let it slide and whatever but it's it's yeah. uh, it's flattering because when people see that a lot of times they're going to be like let's oh, just like ski the east anyway yeah. so it's kind of like drawing attention to you yeah right a little bit right. but if they're doing things that wouldn't be the way we would do them stylistically or something or the way they market it's kind of like i don't know if you don't want brand confusion so. have you ever had, had a little little conversation with anybody or been like hey what's the deal like have you ever had a little bit here interactions and there, but we've yeah. never done anything serious just just conversations yeah yeah st- strongly worded yeah. <laughs> no, not strongly even, worded emails. not even just no. just yeah. suggestions for <laughs> yeah yeah You've got like a baseball bat in your hand. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're going to softball yeah. practice. But hey, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Think that you should probably reassess what you're doing over there. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to yeah. go play some ball now. Yeah. He's <laughs> swinging the bat around. <laughs> no, that's not cool. Violence yeah. is never the answer. No. Um. So, yeah. So, Ski the East, you split off into the, into the, you know, the new website, trying to sell some stuff. So, when did it really take off for you guys? How did it really become a thing uh yeah i'd say it took off basically when we um stopped doing the me Hit films annual movie that was the big jump you know it's growing slowly every year mm-hmm. for close why to did decade, you stop doing years. movies are you just tired of it or what well a lot i mean it was tough finding athletes every year i mean that's always the one of the struggles you know we we were lucky enough to shoot with some just legendary east coast park guys and um and everybody moved out west, so yeah, stop yeah. taking our people, man. Yeah. Is that why you didn't ski the ace? So you can be like, stop leaving. Yeah. Yeah. We need to promote yeah. this place. So come, come back. No, but it's sick because we get to discover, you know, all these crazy talented young guys, and and you get to discover them before they leave, right? Yeah, and, and get to groom them and give them some some visibility, and and uh, yeah, and they're just all super solid dudes, and then they bounce and. You know, it hurts a little bit, but we understand. And, um, you know, it, it's it's tricky, just the whole, like, athlete management side of things. So um, that was always, you know, tough to deal with year after year and finding new talent. But then, yeah, also just the decline of DVDs. And, um, yeah, like I mentioned before, the, the iTunes sales weren't really making up for it. Sponsorship was kind of waning. Um, you know, it's a tough niche out here. And we're we're the underdogs in in the industry and um it just got yeah a little more tricky each year and being out on the road for so long we're in our early 30s and kind of a little burnt out so Mm -hmm. still looking to pick you know (laughs) finding 15 year olds to take out on the road to ski urban with as we're getting older that balance seems a little sketchy yeah. after a while, yeah. you know. Yeah, you Wait, what were you guys doing out there, man? Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds sketchy how you just said it. Driving I mean. around in a big windowless van yeah. Yeah. Jet. full of candy. There just comes an age where, yeah. I guess, yeah. You're Jet. rolling the streets looking for urban kids. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, you want to check rails? out? Want to ch- check out my sweet winch? It's yeah. in the back of my van. Yeah, there's this awesome dub kink down the street. Hop on in. Yeah, yeah. Do you know we're selling tall tees now? Come check it out. Come hop right in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jeff was a was a animal. He he was the one rallying on crazy urban missions. I mean, going down to West Virginia and DC and shit for Snowmageddon and um I'd usually stick with the backcountry crews, you know, go up to Newfoundland or Chick Chocks or, you know, stay locally here. We'd try to split up and just capitalize on as much footage as we could when it was good cuz mm-hmm. you never knew how soon it would turn bad again, which was usually pretty soon out here in the East, you know, <laughs> yeah. weather just going south real fast. So, um, 
But yeah, that was, that was our focus for like 10 years, just yeah. documenting the sickest skiing on the East Coast, whether it's park, urban, and then backcountry was sort of what I think gave us some differentiation for anyone else who was ever filmed out here. So mm-hmm. that was that was our focus. That was our blood, sweat, and tears for a decade. And so when it a when did it come movies, when yeah. did it come down to it? You're like, all right, you finally get to a point, and you guys are sitting around having a beer one day or a coffee, and you're like, I don't think we should do another one. Is that kind of how it went? Is we it try good? actually. <laughs> we tried to do it. We're like tenth. 10th anniversary movie, which was Prime Cut. We're like, yeah, we'll call it quits after that. And then... 10's a nice solid number. Yeah, yeah. That was a good milestone. And then we just kind of didn't and (laughs) rolled into filming another season. We're like, well, I guess we're committed to this. We have sponsors signed on somehow. And let's do one more, I guess. But yeah, we were really trying to do it a year before we actually did. (laughs) <laughs> it takes a while to make the transition. To we have to up our manufacturing in the ski east to make up for the money that we lose for the DVD sales and all that. So mm-hmm. that's why it took basically one year to so transition just, over. Yeah, so it's just kind of a natural progression. Like, okay, we're not doing, we're not making much money this, but this, mm-hmm. yeah. this is making some cash. And, yeah. But we knew we could use the filmmaking to promote to promote the ski east brand. That's you know how we got a huge amount of our customer base, our fan base, was through the filmmaking, obviously. Mm-hmm. So to be able to bring those people over into Ski the East and still use the film work as a, a driver for what <clears throat> Ski the East is all about. And you're still doing you're still doing a lot of film like smaller short little stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like kind of what's yeah, that instead all about? of selling movies now we just give it away as marketing for the brand. Mm-hmm. So we put it up on YouTube and like on our website. Short and clips and that sort of thing. So we're doing about well full webisode branded webisode series where we still sell a little bit of sponsorship, but mm-hmm. I would say we're almost filming as much as we used to oh really it's just that we don't <laughs> film as much now we, yeah, you uh, guys we hired do, yeah. out to guys like him yeah i mean yeah, we're yeah. still organizing you know private park shoots you know big big 20 30 person park shoots with you know production staff and athletes you know closed sessions in the springtime and we're hitting every storm we can to shoot pow um we're doing you know little park series called lapping um so and we have a weather we have a weather forecast uh, weekly webisode series we do like I don't know 25 episodes 30 episodes a winter mm-hmm. so we have like three kind of mini movies so you haven't really stopped doing on. it you just yeah. transferred it to the new yeah. uh, new medium really which is yeah. the internet it was mm-hmm. a skill and an audience that we built up for so long that you couldn't just shut obvious it down marketing yeah for, mm-hmm. the, for the brand and expanding that so what did you guys brand. take in in university was it like business classes that sort of thing yeah, I took business and I majored in art and film. Mm-hmm. I was a g- geography major. <laughs> See, those and are business minor. Yeah, so he did all our map making to find out where yeah. we were. Yeah, right. So basically, that, that's <laughs> I was the trip planner, charting yeah. things with you know the compass. Yeah. And yeah, it did right. come in handy during the movie tour, but I mean that's just you know <laughs> Google <laughs> <laughs> navigating city streets back yeah. in the day. Yeah. So that was just kind of an basically where you are is just how it ended up is like you're yeah. it's like the uh, the way a stream flows right it kind of works its way to the ocean sort of thing if yeah. you were everything you've done has led you here it wasn't like you really had to go out of your way to do it it was just like oh one foot after the other you just kind yeah. of found yourself little milestones and little decision yeah, yeah. points where we had to make leaps of faith for sure so you're still producing just as much content as you did before almost um, i'd say yeah yeah close to it and I, actually a lot more people see it now we're surprised because be like, don't you remember this, you know, segment for the Meathead films? And people are, you know, very, no. for the amount of people that saw that and bought the DVDs is way less than people can see one episode in one day exactly. online now. So maybe someone from like the Middle East is like, ski the East. What is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ever consider doing like a like a travel series? You could do like the ski the Far East. We did yeah. the ski Far East. Did yeah. you really? A couple movies. Yeah, we expanded out when we had tough winters. We went to Japan. Oh twice, yeah. Twice and I uh, went to one year when it was really bad. It was eighty degrees here in in February. March. Yeah, we went to Switzerland. Oh, there you go, and Eastern Atlantic. Yeah, just Eastern Atlantic. Yeah, <laughs> that was the there's always sell. a way you can twist it, yeah. right? <laughs> you always do like ski the Middle East, go to, like Iran or something. Like that. That'd be <laughs> yeah. nice, right? Kazakhstan. <laughs> so, what is your problem with the West? No problem. No, I know. I'm just teasing. At all? Yeah. No, it's just East is where we grew up. Yeah, it's know. what we know. And I was trying um, to, get, I was trying to, trying to go to yeah. like some kind of no. A lot of people. Beef. No, no, the yeah. Let's create the beef. Yeah. A lot of people think that for sure, and yeah, we have no beef. There's a lot of people. A lot of people on the podcast are like, man, 
you just gotta start asking like tougher questions and get people like. Yeah. Like, t- I was telling someone this the other day. It's like the TMZ of skiing. Yeah. Like, I was talking to ABM about that and just <laughs> just start some like random beef and just be like, oh, I heard this. What really? Yeah. And they're like, oh, he says this and. People love the drama, rumors. And people, love, well, think of something. Think of some shit talk to, to <laughs> before the episode. We're, we're, we're bred tougher out here, you know. So they don't see. There's, 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 some, no, yeah. there's no complainers there out is. here. Like yeah. you know, that's one thing that we sort of half make fun of about the West Coast. It's like, yeah, it's only snowed six inches. I'm not going out. But out here, six inches, man. I'm, I'm getting pitted. You know, it's gonna be deep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. people don't people don't complain, and when they go out west, they. They can ski anything. Like so is that like your is that like your high water mark here? Six inches? Do you guys have like a we like say a, like four do you guys, inches? Do you, do you yeah. guys have like a six six inch rule here at here at work where you're like no work today? Yeah, We're going skiing. Definitely. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like a twelve inch, fifteen inch day back back home. We have a thirty centimeter day in Whistler. That's what we call it. Oh, it's thirty yeah, centimeters, shit. and you're in a job that you don't necessarily need to be at. You're like, all yeah. right, we'll start later. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, a mean, six, so it's a six inch day here on these. Yeah, colors. you guys get to cherry pick. You guys get to cherry pick. You're spoiled. You know, you guys get a good a lot, and we don't. So when we get a little bit, we, yeah, we try to take advantage of it. Yeah. So we don't mind a thick forest, super tight trees, you know, like we go out. <laughs> call west and it's like six all inches open yeah. Yeah. easy six inches and you thick, call this the glades man yeah. Yeah. Where we just like, whoosh, whoosh, yeah. you know, all the you're wearing like in the face you're wearing yeah. like a full face mask not because yeah. you're hardcore just because you don't get yeah. whipped by yeah. a switch some people do for sure yeah there's some legends of mad river glen that they basically their whole style is leaning back on the backs of your skis <laughs> Almost laying down in the house so they can get under all the branches, and, and they just ski the whole run like that. Windshield wiper turns, just just like <laughs> super super wiggle. Yeah, the, the and they're wiggling wiggle. freshies all day. No one yeah. can get into the thicket. You got Worm got, turning. You guys got guys whipping through with like the chainsaw masks on their, yeah. on their face. <laughs> yeah, brush guard. <laughs> yeah, right. Their whole suit yeah. is just one big sheet of du- like one big yeah. roll of duct tape. <laughs> just, just whole, oh, for sure. Yeah, like you'll whole, see plenty of duct tape out holes here, and everything. But it does yeah, get, people, it does get good out here. Really good. Yeah. I mean, we we want best powder in 2012 so apparently we filmed the best powder in the world in 2012 for powder magazine video powder magazine. awards yeah oh yeah how much the, you have to pay for that award yeah exactly just just give probably me, they felt sorry for us yeah. after a while. like man these guys we're on the <laughs> fence if you guys give us uh yeah. if you guys pay a buy a double page spread <laughs> yeah. we will there give you this award no, no. <laughs> yeah no we had yeah we'd won a best urban award back in 2008 or something and so we'd we'd you know been submitting our our little underdog movies every year and um, yeah somehow we got best powder that one year. <laughs> I think everyone else had a really bad year. If we go back, yeah, I think that was that was some of the tearful years out at Tahoe and some mm-hmm. of those places yeah. were really bad. So, but we we had a yeah February dump up at Chay Peak where it snowed. I don't know, 30 inches, and then the next day it snowed like 15 inches of real blower, so it was super deep and it was sunny, which. Let me tell you, powder and sun almost never happen on the East Coast. Mm. That is one mix that it's like hardly the, ever happens. It's like a it's like a, a leprechaun yeah. leprechaun riding a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> when we get the big nor'easters, we get they yeah. come in and they're usually so much wind that it can just get caked out and styrofoamed out before you. It can snow sixty inches, but yeah, sometimes buff. just pure wind buff. Yeah, it can be all wind buff. So yeah. frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, you're like, oh, it's ruined already. <laughs> yeah. But you gotta kind of guess ski it during the storm, yeah. If, if you're lucky enough, yeah. yeah. Small windows for sure, but yeah. Every now and then we'll have <laughs> a good little few days. Yeah. So how many days do you guys yourselves get up now? Do you figure any in a season? Now? Yeah. Not that much. Nothing to brag about now. <laughs> yeah, no. Back when we were filming, yeah, hundred plus days a year. You, you two should get shirts that say "We used to ski the east." <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what we need. We do. Did just say "Ski the least." <laughs> ski the least. Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> yeah. But do you, you pick your days? I'm. I'm assuming. Yeah, we pick yeah, our we days. Cherry pick them. But we do one thing that's been great having Cam and some of the other guys on board is now when we do get powder days, I don't feel the super anxiety anxiety but like i gotta go out and film we gotta organize yeah. all this stuff like i can go out and because you're the boss the now yeah you gotta get nice. other people to do it we, like last year or last two years or some of the first years where we've gone out on the best days of the year and actually just skied mm-hmm. ever it's, it's nice it's, it was weird it's, it's nice really to just weird. not i always I felt guilty to, it's always nice yeah. to be like oh i don't where's my phone where's my camera where's my yeah. where's my 40 pound camera bag don't don't, don't don't worry about it yeah. oh yeah cam's got it he is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now yeah we bust out the 200 cm straight sticks on the deep days man get in 
Real deep. <laughs> 200. Yeah. You're skiing too, like straight skis? Yeah. Yeah. You guys do know that like in the last 15 years, there's a revolution in- Heard in, about uh, it. Yeah. In, yeah. In, yeah. We ski don't partake yeah. in those twin tippers. <laughs> <laughs> Powder skis. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> Glen Plague specials. Yeah. yeah, man. You get in deeper. Yeah. That's what makes four inches feel like four feet. Straight skis, man. <laughs> you're hopping around. You're struggling down. Six, 60 centimeters underfoot. Or 60, or 60, yeah, 60 yeah. mil underfoot. Yeah. yeah. So what What are you guys skiing on these days? Do you have like a quiver? Or do you just kind of have one or two skis that you like to use? Like what's a, what's a good East Coast ski? If you're going to if you're gonna buy one ski, what kind of dimensions, what would it look like? Well, we, we made our dream ski two or three years ago with, with J-Skis, mm-hmm. the ski, the East Collab ski. Um, and that is... 97 underfoot or something like that. <laughs> well, I don't we know that. Yeah, it's like 95, 98 underfoot. It's called the all play, and it's, yeah, just obviously a super playful all mountain ski. And um, I, it was pretty, it feels pretty similar to um, the line blends, which you know, <clears> were <throat> my favorite ski up until that. And, um, you know, on bigger, deeper days, yeah, like 105, 110 underfoot is about max of what I need. So I like it. You bust through the mm-hmm. crud and the mud <laughs> and the rock yeah, the and the mood. rocks. <laughs> but you do see guys out here with super fat, like 120, 130 with the you know huge camber. And Just because that. it's like, oh, this is cool, man. It's like, trending, man. I like these guys. It, yeah, it is. That's pretty much yeah. what it is. Yeah. I like, j- they get down their jackets all clean. They haven't touched. No powder has mm, gotten yeah, above right. their waist all day. So. And all, all they're doing is like... <laughs> basically it's like those, around. yeah it was big it's like putting like those um those uh like toboggan discs under each foot because <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. I mean? yeah. that's you pretty much to like spread eagle the whole run because yeah. you can't even yeah, because that's together. pretty much the only thing that's actually touching the snow right it's yeah just like, like sauce like a double saucer yeah yeah but yeah is it the perfect east coast easy yeah between 90 and 100 that's your kind of your all mountain what river. no yeah, I'm 105 at least. You like it a little more skinny, dude. But yeah, I ski on 65 under foot right now. So <laughs> like that's my, that's my K2 straight to 200. Yeah, the Glen. <laughs> yeah, it's been taking those out a lot yeah. more. Yeah. My boots way wider than my ski right now. <laughs> <laughs> what a kook! <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's part of the fun, man. Yeah, I bought keep, my dream skis. Fresh. I had all these dream skis growing up in the 90s, skiing and on a 200 foot trash dump in Ohio. So I'm looking, I'm looking for a pair of Force Nines. I was just gonna say that's what that. I yeah, I bought the force. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. With the icicles on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of purpley ones. ones, like one of the last yeah. editions of it. Yeah. I was at, in New Zealand. I was at uh, Tamble Basin, and they had a Force Nine shot ski. Wow. I was wow. like, oh my god. I'm like, I'm like, there's a possibility this may be on the plane going back to <laughs> <laughs> going back to Whistler with me. But uh, I have a friend that actually, a guy named Feet Banks. He uh, runs Mountain Life Magazine out in out in Whistler, and he just this year switched to like non rear entry ski boots <laughs> and like the force nine like white or the yellow and black boot i think he's got like six pairs of them or wow. he had like a he pulled out this cardboard box and got like six <laughs> pairs of them he's like oh these are the best <laughs> and like he doesn't do it ironically he's like i like these they fit well he's and real I, yeah, yeah and i think i think just recently the guys at surefoot finally got him to like dude <laughs> <laughs> change your boots man you're gonna hurt yourself yeah if it works it works man yeah yeah, yeah go with what what you like right yeah and that's really what it boils down to yeah yeah i mean you see that out here all the time people just they they don't give a shit they don't They'll just wear whatever they got ski on whatever they got and yeah the scene they're having out, a great time what's the what's like the, the attitude like the scene out here like i know for instance like you go to so a place like like jackson hole and it's um like hardcore, like we're hardcore skiers. It's the gnar scene. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the gnar scene, right? Yeah. And there's kind of a bit of attitude. You know, yeah, I mean, for there's sure. great skiers there. People have a good time. There's a kind of a bit of attitude, right? Yeah. Um, you go to other places, like say Whistler, and everyone's just out there to get after it. It's like let's go and do it as quick as we can. Yeah. Because there's a lot of a lot of lineups. You know what I mean? Like when you're up there on a powder day, you've got a routine. It's like we got to yeah. go here and then here. Oh, this one's not opening. Then we're getting there, so you can get everything first. But with with the Whistler crew, it's like. 
oh, dude, that was sick. I just saw you send that. That was awesome. Right on. Blah, blah, blah. How was it? I know a few other places that I've been, they're like, oh, you hit that? Oh, I was going to hit that. He got to me first. You know, and it's kind yeah. of a like bitter thing. Whereas yeah. where I'm from, it's like, whoa, that was sick. Yeah. I just saw you saw. Was that you that hugged that? I saw you tomahawk out of it. It was amazing. <laughs> right? Canada's notoriously friendly. Yeah. Right? And then, so what? what's the vibe out here? Knowing that, you know, there isn't a lot of really amazing quality days yeah. um a lot of people do kind of just ski because like i said we're gonna ski the east out of spite almost do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. in we're gonna ski the east in spite of the west you know that's where it's like the mecca of skiing that's where all the big mountains are it's where you get all the snow but here it's great as well and people want to stay here and they've got that loyalty um how does that reflect with like kind of the vibe and like kind of attitudes and, and whatnot when you're on the hill is this like a friendly place to be? Is it kind of like a cutthroat, you know? Kind no, of no there, there's a little bit of competitiveness out there at some of the bigger resorts that have, you know, the better terrain because you have the better mm-hmm. skiers there for sure. Um, you know, Stowe and, and Jay are probably the most core backcountry, um, side country resorts in the East. Mm-hmm. And, and rightfully Mad, so. Mad River too. Mad yeah, River. Mad River. And, you know, there's definitely some some competitiveness but yeah everybody's just like mostly oh, oh do you mind like if i take this line or do you want to go over there or mm-hmm. whatever you know people aren't cutthroat and yeah, yeah every and a lot of people have secret stashes out here because they you know do do what they need to do in the off season to yep. <laughs> get those spots or <laughs> yeah, they yeah. just know them and um you know there's a lot of a lot of good little hidden zones to they just may not tell each other about but yeah yeah. right so you kind of keep that a little secretive but for some common areas you know people are yeah super friendly super encouraging there's a lot of good camaraderie out there everyone's like you know we're all in this together yeah (laughs) yeah like we've been waiting forever for this pow day let's all enjoy it yeah it's about the shared struggle and that's what what keeps the community yeah tight and ski the struggle familiar atmosphere (laughs) yeah exactly you come down after a crappy day and sharing a beer but you're still out there skiing which is better than the day works so. yeah awesome um sweet well, i kind of want to get back to the to the shirts again yeah, yeah. so on the, the timeline we've kind of got to a point where you're like all right we're done with making these full movies yep we're going to transition into full-on clothing full apparel mm-hmm. um do you just pretty much do just shirts hats hats that sort of thing you started hoodies. with just like a t-shirt, a yeah. hat, and <laughs> some stickers. I and was think. it all online for like the first couple of years, sort of thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 we did. And is that still? Sales, it was checking the mail for a while. Then we launched our first. You know, we accepted credit cards. Then, you know, a few years ago, we got on the Shopify ecom mm-hmm. um, service, and we're about to launch a new site in the next week or two, too. But oh yeah, when's that? Uh, next week. Yeah. Just like and what's it going to be called? Ski the East. Oh, you're just gonna. No, oh, you're just new version. Yeah, oh, you're just, just always up, oh, just up, updating the website. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay, sweet. So by the time this episode is out, yeah, yeah. you should go to ski the East dot net and check out all of our new gear that we just released. So yeah, we we started out doing um, t shirts and hoodies and hats, and then once we made the leap in 2013, we opened up our first like cut and sew program where we were making stuff. Um, overseas, and we found an mm-hmm. agent that could help us get some of the products that we always just dreamed about. Yeah, we were totally, totally self-taught with the whole cut and sew process, and started the easy. cut, cut end, C- cut and sew. So, oh yeah, yeah like custom you mm-hmm. know, designing mm-hmm. clothing from scratch. Who does most of the designing? <coughs> we we do it in house. We have a couple of designers that have helped us, but we, you know, it was Bruce, it, Bruce and I. It was do it. just pretty much the two of you guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. we worked out of a basement until two years ago. Just the two of us. Yeah, oh, really? Windowless basement, yeah, yeah. for almost Jeff's seven, basement. eight years. And you guys are still friends after all this time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're pretty much old married couple, you know? Yeah. 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 Do you... We gave each other away at each of our weddings, so... <laughs> Locked each other yeah, down the aisle. Yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, we proclaim, like, you know, now we're getting divorced. <laughs> little, little cat fights, little spats every once in a while. Hey, Cam, have you ever seen these guys, yeah. like, yell at each other? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. fight like an old married couple, but... Yeah. yeah it's it's never came to blows, though. Yeah, no, I never got physical. I mean, college days, we, we, you know, some drunken, you know, yeah, whatever, wrestling, yeah. door slams, and yeah. like talk yeah. to me later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah, do you, now we're too old to. Is there any silent treatment? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's not talking to me today. What's <laughs> yeah. wrong with you? Probably yeah. been a little bit of that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, in a basement for that many years, man, it gets tight. Yeah, you can get you can get on each other's nerves, right? Get a little circus. Do you yeah. ever have any um, 
um, creative differences when it comes to like, I think we should do it this way. No, I don't think we should do it that way. Oh, yeah. Do you compromise, do both. Uh huh. Yeah. Who, yeah. You, who well, usually, yeah, for a long time, it was just the two of us, so we agree yeah. to disagree. Yeah. yeah. Or one of us <laughs> to try to get each other over si- the other side, but now we and have then, enough people we can kind of break the. And mm-hmm. would you go to a point where it maybe like you've got a decision to make and you're like, oh, I think. I want to do mine. I want to do mine, and you're like, "Well, the last two that I did sold pretty well, better than the one." Like, do you go off like, <laughs> you're like, you know, my last two shirts sold yeah. well, way yeah. better than your two we shirts. We bring out our arsenal of stats. We'll come with our full yeah, shirts. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, come for battle. No, I mean we we collaborate on yeah pretty much every single design. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, graphic design for the t-shirts, but then for the actual like construction and fit design of. The, the overseas products. That's where the Asians came. come in. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> agents, 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 agents and Asians. And uh, yeah, we, we usually have a pretty similar vision. I mean, we wouldn't be in it for this long if we didn't. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, we just work out the kinks and, and send it. So, and is, are the, is this a ski the East shirt? Mm-hmm. Yep. I dig that. This is our yeah. Daffy Oxford shirt. I'm, I'm loving that shirt. It's amazing. You know, a little East coast prep going on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You gotta, I got to go to an exam later or, like, <laughs> yeah. I got to meet my girlfriend's parents. I got to yep. put on a collared shirt. Yep. But still yeah. convey who I am as a person. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. That's one of the things we discovered, yeah, when we're, even when we're making our movies or doing our clothing is that we want to appeal to a pretty broad audience because we're so niche as far mm-hmm. as we're skiing only and East Coast only. Mm-hmm. And really skiing is only in the Northeast for the most part. A little bit in the mid Atlantic, so we're pretty tight little niche. So we had to make sure we're making stuff for all age groups and mm-hmm. backcountry and park, and that's kind of what we try to unveil in our new collection every fall. Is just a pretty good spread of of looks and colors. So and when you put out a new collection, how how big is it? Do you have a certain amount of T-shirts that you want? Certain amount of like collared shirts, hoodies? Is there a certain number, yeah. or is it based on like all right, you set up like we need this many pieces for our new collection? We got to come up with ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we've kind of capped out on how many uh, t-shirts we're doing right now. We have uh, between men's, women's, youth. We have what forty different designs or forty different mm-hmm. skews, basically. Just in t-shirts. Yeah, just in tees, and then is that your biggest seller? Just straight up t-shirts. Yeah, yeah I'd say tees followed by yeah beanies, and then the I don't know apparel and beanies hoodies, and yeah. apparel are kind of yeah neck mm-hmm. and neck, but. Overall, I think total SKUs, we have like 700 different SKUs between all the colors, all the sizes, mm-hmm. all the different products. So it's a, it's a good amount to juggle for if, you guys. If, if, uh, if I may ask, if you, you don't have to tell me this, but what's kind of your overall volume in sales for, for a season? For like a fiscal year, what are you thinking you're selling? About a million dollars right now. Yeah. yeah. And that's uh, obviously enough to uh, cover your overhead. Yeah. And you know, you both have, you said you've got your wife now. Do you have kids at all? You guys have kids yet? Yep. Yeah, yeah I have uh, one child, one child on the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. Exciting. In December. You don't look as tired as <laughs> you should. Yeah. Yeah. He's got yeah. the baby face. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have any kids, but got married uh, last summer. Oh, nice. So, so, you got fam- so you guys got families yeah. now. You got, yeah. you know, new priorities to think of. It's not just two guys in a basement making shirts <laughs> for <laughs> yeah. yourselves anymore. You got to yeah. take care of that. Plus, yeah. you've got, uh, I've seen at least three or four other people in the office. Yep. How many staff do you have at work here? Yeah, we have three full-time in-house. Actually, just hired a fourth, um, mm-hmm. a senior apparel designer to take a lot of what Jeff and I uh, deal with, all the manufacturing and sourcing. So as you as you, um, as you you hire these new people and you see, like, the skill sets that they have, and then you're like, we want you to do take this kind of responsibility away from us because we got to focus a little bit more on, you know, business back-end stuff we can't do as much. Are you finding that you're learning a lot from them, or you're like, "Oh my God, we should have hired you five years ago." Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, "What? This yeah, it's that easy? Like, this is all you have to do now?" Yeah. There's a lot of things you think, "Yeah, it would be great if we did three, four years ago for sure." Mm-hmm. Well, especially when we were first making the break from mm-hmm. media it, films. But I mean, f- yeah, we're learning now. Like, the more people we get on, we can't really scale the business without being able to teach the business mm-hmm. to other people. So we mm-hmm. have to. And then you get, get much do you get a lot from them stuff. too as they come in with a lot of new skills, Definitely. new knowledge? Yeah. Do you learn from them and like, okay, actually, let's. Yeah, and it's great for when we do our you know, brainstorm sessions for new designs or the way we want to market our products or reach our audience. Mm-hmm. There's just way more ideas floating around rather than just me and Rooster and a couple dogs fighting it out. Yeah, that's yeah. the best part of this office. There's tons of dogs. Dog friendly. Yeah, there's more dogs than humans. So we got five, <laughs> six dogs and five people. So another question: When it comes, to, like, are you guys running out of ideas? 
when it comes to designs? Like you've been doing this for no, how long? No. We have way more yeah. ideas than time to execute them. That's yeah. one of our problems. Or just money. Narrowing it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like when it comes to like a shirt design or something like that, it's like, well, or do you make something like this is sweet? And someone's like, actually, you made this one already. <laughs> no, we don't do that. We do the we do just repeats on some of the graphic tees only by popular demand, really. But we try to make sure it's fresh every year, even mm-hmm. though it takes a lot longer to do that. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times people asked us to do repeats but if we did that every year and we did everyone's repeats that everyone wants then it would just be the same thing every year it's so. just oversaturating the market but always getting a new t-shirt and as far as our apparel goes you know we try to switch up the style a little bit or, or patterns and, or and then how much say on a t-shirt how much of a run would you make like would you cut would you print like 200 of one shirt yeah it depends on yeah. the design depends on the design you're like the this one's really is, cool you know t-shirts is anywhere from you know, three hundred to three thousand. So. Yeah, and we then, printed seventeen thousand tees this summer. So wow. that's our full, full quantity for forty different styles. So, say you got a shirt that doesn't doesn't really speak to anybody. You know, it's a decent shirt, but they, no one really buys it, and you've got it sitting around for a while. Do you just keep it on the website and sell it until it's gone? Yeah, or do you like send, or, uh, or do you like you know send out shirts to like Africa or something like that? Well, you know what <laughs> I'm ha- saying. We yeah. haven't done that, but we just did a big warehouse clean out, and we actually yeah. might be. Well, there's a there's a I think it was a um, uh, what's it called? It was a podcast I got through. I um, oh, can't remember the name off the top of my head. I'll I'll find it. Um, Planet Money. Mm-hmm. It was a Planet Money podcast, and they actually have like a four part series about. T-shirts. They had a T-shirt made, and they documented the entire process from going to the cotton farm yeah, in right. southern states, going to the textile factory in Bangladesh or wherever they were, to having it printed and made in like Colombia or something like that, having it put on the, the the ship and sent back over. And then when a T-shirt doesn't make it anywhere, they send them to like Africa yeah, and yeah. think like they'll have like, you know, the Super Bowl t-shirts that, you know what I mean? It'll be like the, the Washington Redskins Super Bowl champions. And it's yeah. like, no, they didn't win that year. Do you know, <laughs> yeah, do you know what totally. I mean? Yeah. But they're going to be, they're going to be over there. Yeah. You should, I'll, I'll give you the, 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 I think you'd find that probably pretty interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. Really that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so things like that. Do you guys have a lot of um, like charity work that you do as well? Within within the East community, I'm sure. Yeah, we must. have yeah we have two main nonprofit partners. One is Flying Ryan Foundation, and the other is High Fives Foundation. High um, Fives, yep. Yeah. I don't know what's Flying Ryan. Flying Ryan is uh, was started by Peter Hawks after he lost his son Ryan um, doing some of the FWT comps, and uh, he started this this program to. Uh, give back um, to students and uh, help them with expenses for uh, the ski season and and create a whole uh, philosophy around 13 principles that he found in uh, one of Ryan's journals that is just kind of um, uh, value-based principle set to just live a good life. Yeah, live a good life. And um, yeah, he's just doing amazing things. Certain programs with with schools and ski clubs and um ski teams so yeah just really spreading spreading his son's message far and wide throughout the east coast and yeah he's involved in a lot of different um uh, of, uh off snow and on snow events so we've mm-hmm. been working with him since the beginning we filmed with with ryan um the year the year that he passed actually when he was back east for a bit in between competitions but um, so that's been, yeah, that's been really humbling to be a part of from, from the beginning to be asked to be a part of that. And we're, mm-hmm. we're the exclusive online distributor of, of his gear. You know, he sells just tees and mm-hmm. beanies and hats and stuff. And all that goes, the, the proceeds of that will go mm-hmm. to his, his foundation. Yeah, yeah. It goes to scholarships for, for kids. They give out small scholarships, sometimes bigger ones, but usually I think around 500 to a thousand dollars to help kids awesome. get to the next level. Every, sport, everything helps. Or it can mm-hmm. be just in some academic thing. It's all, it's really pretty broad. Mm-hmm. They don't really, it's not just for skiing or just for snowboarding or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. They do all kinds of awesome. stuff. Awesome. And uh, what's the website? Do uh, you know off the top of your head? Yeah, just flyingryanfoundation.org. Cool. Yep. And then uh, obviously High Fives, which is a fantastic organization. Which yeah, helps. you're familiar. Yep. Yeah. Very, uh, a friend of mine uh, was actually on the show. I did a two-part episode with him. His name's Mike Shaw. Yeah. Um, 
so I was familiar with them a little bit before, but I looked into them more because he uh, had a big accident at Keystone, broke his neck. He was um, a recipient. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's an incomplete quad. So he's actually, he got the surgery, a couple 10-inch rods in his neck, and he is back walking, back wow. on skis. He's not, you know, charging as hard as he ever was, um, but he's pretty much got the majority of his, like, life back. Uh, he's extremely, extremely fortunate. Um, so, yeah, the high fives basically is, is, a, is a foundation that – uh, assists people with you know, spine injuries, mm-hmm. that sort of thing in the skiing industry. Yep. Uh, I think it's highfives.org. Is that right? I think so. I, th- I think so. Yeah. Highfivesfoundation.org? Something yeah, like that. If you, if you, just, this. If you just Google I mean, High Fives yeah. Foundation skiing, yeah. you'll find it find it easily. Um, so, wrapping up, next thing we got to talk about, we've got kind of through where you guys came from. Where are you going? You got the new uh, updated website coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, got a new, yeah. Pretty major employee coming on doing the apparel design, which will get a lot off our plate, which will help us focus more on changing diapers. Yeah, changing <laughs> yeah. diapers. Yeah, my daughter's coming in mid December. Great time for e yeah. Not very busy at all during that time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who needs that? Hey, who is that your biggest biggest time of the year? Like yeah, right November? now, right now through Christmas. Yeah, mm-hmm. is when we bring in probably seventy percent of our revenue. So oh, wow. o- overall, about. 60 65 percent of our revenues from online and the rest is is wholesale so we manage about 130 wholesale accounts and we actually just landed one of the biggest fish in the game rei took us on for 19 east coast stores fantastic so we're waiting to get the po from them but um that'll definitely ramp things up for the wholesale that's base. fantastic you might so. sell enough shirts that you can start having kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. more dogs we'll just get more dogs yeah, yeah. yeah. even better yeah. Yeah. even better yeah, uh, so, so that you've got that coming up you got the new website anything yeah. else that uh, any big projects that you may or may not want to talk about on the in the future um Are you expanding into like different realms like surf the east bike the east we thought about it we do yeah. own all those websites from back in the day when we thought about yeah kind of the damn it action. Like, i should probably go buy that and sell them back to you guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah the action sports you know outdoor recreational takeover for the east coast but um yeah we have we have another another thing in in the works uh right now An- another brand that we're that we're when you see it, with. when you see that rolling up we're hoping to do it next summer at the earliest, at the latest. 2018? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So about a year from now? Yeah. yeah. So that, that'll be where a lot of our time is going to be. Put us on the press there. release. Put us on the press release. We can find out what it is. And we'll we'll yeah. pop it up for you guys for sure. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What do you guys have on tap for the rest of the day? <sighs> busy week. Yeah. Super busy week. Yeah, we're going to the Boston Expo next week. Which Yo, is, is that, is that next week? Yeah. Whole U-Haul. Yeah. 30 foot U Haul down to the. Are Expo you allowed to sell there? Goods. Yeah, it's yeah. a public expo. We do a full pop up shop. We have mm-hmm. a 20 by 20 foot booth and you just <clears throat> create a store. Do you find that, uh, like, I have a friend that uh, has a yoga clothing company, Inner Fire Creations, it's called. Um, and she will go, when it first started, she'd go to all the Wanderlust festivals and there's one in Whistler, so she'd crash at my house and she'd have all these bins full of stuff. And she's yeah. like, that's like her biggest, those are like her, her biggest generators of income yeah you know what i mean she does a huge uh, online business like you guys do but she's like when i go to those festivals it's cash in my hand yeah. it's like money i can tangibly use right now i can pay for things right away i don't have to worry about it coming through whatever different channels it needs to trickle through it's like but you can get volume out is yeah. that do you find that's kind of the same thing for you guys yeah yeah mm-hmm. like boston's it's a, been big for us every year and it's not just for the sales aspect, it's also just shaking hands and mm-hmm. kissing babies. And yeah, <laughs> meeting, meeting everyone. Boston's our biggest market. Is it sure. shaking babies, kissing hands? Now, do yeah. you guys do other <laughs> other trade shows? Like I know the Toronto Toronto Ski and Snow Show was just this past weekend. Yeah, we've never had our gear early enough to do that. We've always wanted to, and and there's some technicalities with getting yeah. that much gear, a huge U-Haul of gear over the board yeah. and then back again. Mm-hmm. How much yeah. did you sell? There's some logistics that we might try to work out into next year, but because you know what, it's also it's a big project to get everyone there, the whole team yeah. for a week, yeah, hotels and everything. So we try to pick and choose our battles. Airbnbs, with that. man. We were we were at yeah. IF three. They, they rented a boat. Yeah. We had this <laughs> nice. like three story yacht thing, a hot tub on the roof. What? Yeah, there's like ten rooms. There's a nice lounge yeah. area with a full kitchen. It was awesome. Yeah. Airbnb. We finally got our hotel in Boston a year ahead of time, so we're finally yeah. in, a, in a good spot instead of the Super Eight. 50 miles outside of town. <laughs> well, I slept on, yeah. There's a lot of skiers right now going, hey, man, don't yeah. bat them out to Super 8. No, no. Oh, that's all we did for <laughs> years. Yeah. For decades, man, yeah. But you've got to a level now that it's like, yeah. we're, we're, uh, we're lowering the number. It's Motel 6 now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got a buddy with a sailboat that I stay with in uh, 
in Boston while we were there, which is always super fun. The gray beard. The, the gray beard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're almost there. We try to keep the <laughs> ship steady, you know? Yep. Love it. Awesome, dudes. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys having me here. I know it was kind of short notice. No sweat, man. Work, thanks for coming out to the East Coast. Yeah, oh, yeah. thanks for the opportunity. Welcome. My Enjoy. Pleasure. Yeah. Come back in the winter. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Ski four inches with us, man. It's yeah, deep. dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hey, if it's a six-inch day, I might even get to ski with you because you'd be able to take the day off work. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cheers, fellas. Thanks a lot. Thank you.